in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed From you again yeah. We've come to hear To hear the sound of the Spirit To hear from you again yeah. We've come to rise, to rise, to rise, to rise in you again. Truly, Lord, this is our prayer. Just turn it into a prayer. Let your eyes be fixed on Jesus while you pray no distraction take away your eyes from your neighbor just fix your eyes on Jesus while you speak truthfully to him this is why I am here to draw to drink fix your eyes on Jesus We cast our crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. One more time. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King. Hey, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Sir King's 
Spirit of the living God tonight, we have come. We came believing. We came trusting. We came expectant. Believing that you are able to lift us. You are able to open our eyes. You are able to show us your ways. I pray, oh God, that tonight our hearts will be greatly edified. I pray that no one who has come here tonight will leave disappointed we decree and declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the working of miracles and we vow tonight as always that you will take the glory and that you alone will be lifted 
in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated please be seated it's good to have everyone again I trust that tonight we will have some time to pray we didn't do justice to our prayer last week amen um, we're to take come up here part two but I'm suspending that tonight we can take that next week the Lord put something in my heart that I think is very very powerful that we must listen to and then we pray amen every time God sends his word his word comes with power his word comes with healing deliverance and hope praise the Lord this afternoon the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about every once and again um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing per time the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar they had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do praise the Lord while I was just putting together this that the Lord I would have me share tonight um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important we are alive to it we understand it and then we pray there is a growing trend of frustration please listen very carefully of depression and exhaustion these three words the Holy Spirit used speaking to me frustration depression and exhaustion to be exhausted and the Lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's word and God's purposes in their lives even for this season and so my my exhortation tonight as we pray is going to deal with two categories of people please listen number one those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season if you belong to this category i have a word for you tonight that there are people there are families there are individuals who it looks like they are in very very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual over that family and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory number two those who um are not necessarily attacked but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned it's important that we are used by God to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding it is important that believers mature into understanding times seasons and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times are we together now so we're going to deal with these two categories of people can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the lord for understanding father grant me understanding grant me understanding grant me understanding hallelujah amen please pay attention 
those following online pay attention if you know someone who belongs to these categories even if not you please pay attention for their sake hallelujah there are not many things that can discourage a christian please listen carefully um, but the few things that can discourage a christian when they are there and they remain the effect of their presence can be disastrous i have identified two major um, issues if i would say that discourage christians number one is on answered prayer there's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves god as a tragedy of unanswered prayer that people lift up their voice to heaven believing that god is alive releasing all their faith as much as they know and then not getting the answer that should be number two is an unfruitful christian life an unfruitful christian life that means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service your work to for god it's very very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart serving the lord giving his best and then with time cannot see um, the evidences there are evidences testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our life. So unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal. There is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in god and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he is attempting to attack your confidence in god and the integrity of his word what satan is really attacking is the integrity of god's word what satan is attacking is your confidence in god the bible says to cast not away your confidence why because it has a great recompense of reward are we together your confidence in god i don't know if i've shared it here but i remember i was in just for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad and he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look i've served this god i've preached about this god but i'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this let me tell you something life has a way of pushing a man a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of god was it not john the baptist under pressure who said go and ask him if he's the messiah or should we expect another for john to be thinking of another 
as the person who ordained Jesus, it should tell you what situations and circumstances can do. Are we together? So your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is a reason why he says that. Fear is terrible. It's a destructive spirit. Every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door. No other spirit can open any door that fear does not open. Failure waits for fear to open the door. Death waits for fear to open the door. Discouragement waits for fear. All the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreck. But then they wait for fear. A man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear, the fear of death now, have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. Fear. Believers live in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you, except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we are now this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged, students are discouraged, workers discouraged, graduates discouraged, pastors discouraged, church members. You know, it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression. When you say praise the Lord, people cannot say hallelujah. In their minds, they say for what? Hallelujah comes from the word halal Yeshua. Praise the one who saves. That's what it means. You say, where is the salvation that I should praise him? Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them, 
just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young and now I am old, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, four years no child then she now gets pregnant and everybody begins to rejoice then at the fifth or sixth month she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem listen carefully that impact another believer will now say my god what is this if you don't listen to what i'm telling you a time will come you will not see the need to continue again there are many believers who are sitting down but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harbalist. But you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power. Going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation. Only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. When an aspect of your life has results. And then another aspect does not have results. You can at least find consolation. Listen. But when every area of your life lacks result, it's a cause for concern. Usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying, but why is this so? Hmm. An attack on your confidence in God. You started your Christian experience loving God. You made bold and audacious statements about God. And while you made that statement, hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you. I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens. I will stand for him. I will stand by him. It doesn't matter. And now five years without a child. And you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made ten years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150,000, you can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again. Until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you until you sit later on and say but god are you not watching and then heaven is silent are we together when believers do not get results they are vulnerable when believers do not get results they are vulnerable please listen to me when believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about. Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. Is your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon 
about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself. Now imagine, please, ladies, imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves, not that they died, not a car accident, not sickness. You left your child, hugging your child in the morning and say, make sure I see you in the evening. And then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child. And there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself. Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say, this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves it's a spirit but i've taught you how spirits work they don't come and work with nothing there is a raw material they use your frustration as a raw material they use your depression as a raw material they create a they, they create a system around your frustration and that becomes the entry and the access point to your life but we have come tonight to call the devil a liar in the name of Jesus Christ it says but I know whom I have believed hallelujah and I am persuaded listen to me it is important I will continue to teach this here koinonia it is important the depth of your spiritual foundation remember my teaching a few weeks ago that the deeper and the more solid your foundation the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation there are people who have dug so deep they have become like paul for me to live is christ and to die is gain what shall separate us from the love of god and then he begins to list a lot of things shall persecution shall famine shall a b and c frustration and then the spirit of fear you look around and see fear all over people's eyes fear financial fear marital fear fear of children fear of raising children It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths, especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne and our conviction, our convictions will not shake. We will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time. Say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow but I know the one who holds tomorrow hallelujah he holds tomorrow I reject fear I reject fear I reject fear fear is a spirit and all spirits are received any spirit that is received can be rejected God has not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. Fear of excelling in ministry. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the future of children. Fear of finances. How can I tell 
if I will live to see tomorrow, how can I tell if I will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear, that is the believer that will weary Satan to victory. Literally. That you can weary the devil with your convictions. That regardless of what happens around you, you can stand in faith and say, my confidence, Lord, more than ever, I trust you. More than ever, I love you. More than ever, I will follow you as for me and my house. When a husband loses his job in one day, by the next month, the wife loses her job. By the third month, the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a Bible in the midst of them full of many promises. And then they do not know what to do. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. At that time, heaven is watching even as hell is also watching. Those who will not curse God because of their pain if your pain will make you curse God, you are small. If your pain makes you curse God, you are weak. If your pain makes you curse God, your foundation is not deep enough. Are we together? Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Cause God and die. While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that your father has died are we together now yes there is a couple I don't know if they were able to make it here but I'll be very impressed if they made it the devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive. I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've had you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> you don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by March you are a millionaire and by March you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just start, we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. 
four months they say we've tried don't come near us for that rent again I confess to you my brothers and my sisters that life can be very trying life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say being in the flesh I thought it would be easier but now I've carried the burden of men and even as the son of God I confessed that men are trying surviving the betrayals and the pain surviving the nakedness and the shame now alone praying in Gethsemane Jesus wept prayed till his tears became like drops of blood is God blessing you today there is a reason behind the attack that has come is currently on you or is on the way coming let me tell you this <laughs> There are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan. And he will come. I assure you. Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you, but I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He's coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan just like faith cometh. Is it not in your Bible? The thief cometh. He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family, he will come. To every ministry, he will come. To every life, please hear me, he will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Hmm. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of of love and passion and friendliness they had i could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce i said what, what was so bad that you want to go out man of god i've said my own we didn't come here to debate it's a conclusion we have made i said take it easy there has to be a way hmm. life bar if you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it? 
and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die they are not stupid people there is a way life can push you huh as a lady when a man has done your traditionals has done everything the invitation letter has come out and then he just looks at you and casually says i don't feel like doing it again because somebody told me you are a witch go and tell your father they can go with the dowry i'm gone at that point you would think you would smile and say oh no problem what is there god told you to live my life you you will cry and not know what direction to turn to it is true that life can push you it is true that life can challenge you recently i had a conversation with a man that broke me i was going to pray for the man true story and the man looked at me and said apostle let me finish the story he said as i'm talking to you right now my beloved wife is in the mortuary i don't even have the money to go and bury her i'll not mention tribe but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy and the man was just smiling i said your wife is dead he said yes sir dead my wife i stood before everybody to exchange vows we agreed to grow old together now she's gone you think they didn't pray to raise that body back the guy i'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking christian what happens you see i've been to the mortuary many times my brothers and sisters as a man of god you can imagine what happens when people die I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary alone. Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me. Wake up in the name of Jesus. And the body is looking. There are times when life will act like that dead body. Hmm. There are times when your finances will act like that dead body. There are times when your marriage can act like that dead body. There are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens, you must know what to do. When the devil launches an attack, do you know what to do? Or do you just know that attack is real? Hallelujah. Years ago, I counseled one of our precious ladies. She's no longer here. And this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says, I love you, I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual, and that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night. They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions and i said what happened and just some issue that he oh, he truly told me under god now it's not for me to vet the rightness but from as a man of god i can tell you i discern he was true 
Some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it. The case had been pending, pending, pending and finally they just threw that man away. Out. No job. And the man was telling me, he said, where do I start from? There were monies they were supposed to give him. Nobody is talking about it and everything has gone. I confess to you that life can be challenging. I confess to you that when Satan attacks you, he looks powerful because the attack is real. You will see it and sometimes you will wonder, Lord, where were you when this came? But tonight's message is for you. Let's look at a few scriptures. Hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, 33. We are really going to pray tonight. And when it's time to pray, please hold, even if it's prophetically, the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message and lift them before God as we cry. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Everyone read with me. One to read. Jesus is speaking. Uh-huh. These things... I have spoken unto you. What things? That in me ye might find peace. Why? In the world ye shall have tribulation. Listen. Listen. Jesus is speaking to believers. And saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience. That means acclimatize your mind. Do not think it strange when these things happen. It says, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Listen to this message, matured believers. And run away from some of these childish things that continue... To give us very aberrated views of life. For our light affliction. Why will you use the word affliction for a Christian? One who is in Christ. One who has sustained victory. The fullness of the spirit. The fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him. Paul is speaking and says for our light affliction which is but for a moment he says worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our light afflictions. So it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions. Nobody sits and prays for it. But that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference, do not think it's strange. Rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory. Are we together now? Yes. I will never forget years ago I was encouraging a gentleman. Generally just sharing with him. I told him, I pray for you to get a job. But in case you don't get a job... I was sharing with him certain business ideas and the guy almost shouted on my face, I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement I was saying that there will be delay in a job, you know, the Bible says he will not, I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God, I pray, I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying if this possibility happens, while you wait for that blessing, be thinking of this and that, I don't mean to embarrass you, but till today, I'm not aware, except if he got it this year. But till today, he has not gotten a job. The same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. They are not the same. The same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant. And say, we do not, we, we are not discouraging you. But we are just saying that there might be these possibilities. And that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody's arguing it. 
until life shows you pepper and then you turn and say ah so this thing is like that a man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space his car had gone In the afternoon, broad daylight. The car that was dedicated in church, don't forget. Don't forget. Almost every church dedicates cars. This car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it and where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church, it should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected. And carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression I'm a man of faith I'm a man that believes in miracles but I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady but one of our ladies here I remember very clearly one time her mother it was in a it was in a night vigil they were praying not in a party not in a club a night vigil they were praying lifting up the name of the Lord fiery prayer suddenly a woman stops drops dead and dies that's how the mother died I remember when that lady called me that night crying and saying apostle how can my mother die in the place of prayer it's the same thing like saying how can Jesus die but he died how can life die life died how can light be dark light became dark sometimes the unexplainable happens like life dying like resurrection being grounded on the cross <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4 I like what this teaching is doing to you you will thank me tomorrow add it to your spiritual arsenals so that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days for some of you the dark cloud is already before you and you will need to know this James let's go to verse um, verse 2 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations why next verse knowing this knowing this tell your neighbor knowing this there are things you need to know knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. It says knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, it says, but let patience have her perfect work. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect work that ye might be mature and complete, wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly 
that it's not unusual for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell. And then also, the Bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road, that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in God's kingdom. Listen very carefully. There is a place where the refiner's fire I preached a controversial message years ago on the furnace of affliction and several people said don't mind that message just believe you know and so on and so forth there is a real experience in a believer's making called the furnace of affliction I repeat there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire it is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? It says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he says, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there, then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that train. Believers, we have been spoon fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism. Ah, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the hill of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings they rise to a high altitude and right there by themselves they they remove the old feather and they are left naked in the cold and they stand there and then suddenly new feather begins to come out slowly there are things that the tempo has been preset it will not be accelerated because of your tears it was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> mm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, 
and you are shouting i'm a millionaire you are joking and flattering yourself we continue to do these foolish things in church that's why the world looks at us and said these people something is wrong with them the faith life is not foolishness people must be educated to understand the pathway the way to the throne is the cross you will never there is no bypass there is only one line man of god hear me you admire everyone who speaks under the influence of god's power Fine. let me tell you when the anointing for service comes it doesn't come as oil it comes as olive there is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil it is true there is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of naboth where there are things that are threshed there unfortunately it's not wheat it is you you are that living sacrifice that must lie there hear me there are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road no other believer can see and it can make sense now god gives you a rule and says for the next five months i meet with you from 11 to 3 every night regardless of how tired you are and some man of god will tell you no it's not in the word god doesn't do that pray when you need to pray god gave you a will i agree and the man is right he is not wrong but with respect to your training violate that instruction and power will be far from you far from you show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path that so many have left would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to answer your listen the path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation except you are laughing by the anointing he that sows in tears a farmer laughing by the farmer has not started farming the size of the instrument alone will take away laughter but you have to farm who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross there are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them ah these young people they just became rich please keep quiet find out the cross behind what you see and then you will know that nobody was dashed well. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful, oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Won't you carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Huh. Making.
ask a coach how a champion is built, the coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached their elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that I've been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going and hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory, are tears and blood sleepless nights and sacrifices as any great man champions hear me being a champion is not just a confession ask a pregnant woman when she gives birth to the baby like a dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing but ask her how it was Right now, you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep. But from you, he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? He calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai, of the Chaldeans, to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. 
So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, if it's God, I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you, not during your training, you will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago, when out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed forget about carrying the power of god no it's not for children you must taste of this cup called shame you must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone and the life that i now live it is no longer about if you are not healed i'm not a man of god no your ego is gone it went with the training you started the ministry with ego so every time you want to pray for the sick your reputation is there and he said young man you can't do ministry that way it is not about the results it is about my glory it is painful to be approved of god this is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments, and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people, and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen. Listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this. When I teach people on how the anointing is made, and I teach people how men are made, it's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. The keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some. Everything. It must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm. Not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you. Is what you fear is brought before you. So that you no longer can fear. God shows you your fear right before you. You pray that he takes it away but you pass through it. And there's no longer fear. This is the making of men. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. Apostle, I'm calling to the ministry of kingdom finance. I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over, take over, take over.
Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because it says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And you say, Son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut, you are joking. Power to speak over nations? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Those keys are hidden in your scars. You keep them there. Oh, I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight. But this meeting is for the great. Because I see that season coming again. It's like a cycle. And a season comes when there is a new recruitment. A new recruitment. It's always like that. And then the ones that have been recruited, God starts working with them. After some years, he says, now there is a, an opening again. That can scare me. That can scare me. Because I know I'm dead already. In my reason, in my seasons, I cry out, this is the end of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. Not every negative thing happening to you is demonic, is of the devil. N not every negative thing will answer to prayer. There are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. Please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young, it means that they were given certain things as a dash. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There were nights when everyone would be sleeping 
I will be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU. The roof of it in the night. From night till morning. In that roof. Seeing visions and revelations. But staying there in that cold. With mosquitoes. Just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain. You are talking of giving some seed. I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once. Once. It was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one, one or two, two hours prayer. I will never forget times when I will lock myself for three days. My eyes will not see the sun. I don't know whether it's day or night. I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night morning till night morning till night Shaka -ta -ka -ta. lord expand this vessel expand this vessel let me be a, a conduit of your power that was a prayer not for myself Lord, for your glory, let it please you that I will be used as a vessel. And one day God vowed a vow and said, My son, I give you my presence as a gift. There is a threshing floor in the life of every believer. Please hear me. I'm addressing those who have been attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand do not think that it is demonic please sit down and give me a few minutes and then we are going to pray tonight let me get back again to those who have been attacked and show you a few keys it applies to everybody but please write this down I remember praying years ago and I said Lord why is it that when I speak nothing happens I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him not all they that believed in him if your ears could hear Peter the Holy Ghost will come to you I said Lord why don't I see this in my life not for pride and God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking but there are dimensions not all things are possible at every level there are real dimensions number one the first key that I will give you to minister comfort tonight overflow one I'm seeing lights all over overflow one this is what I'm seeing lights I'm seeing an impartation lights 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 just like like thunder like lightning light I believe it's an impartation just overflow one just caught my attention in the name of Jesus Christ that which God has in store let it come upon you in Jesus name number one the first key that you need to survive these seasons, whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining. Number one, never lose your joy. Please never lose your joy. In this kingdom, joy is strength. Never, never lose your joy. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not always. Always as you go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I repeat, rejoice. Joy. Joy is of the Holy Ghost though. Joy is not just clownish laughter. You don't have to laugh to be in joy. Lord, I don't know the name of what you are doing, but I rejoice. I rejoice, I rejoice, I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. True joy will come in form of a melody on your lips. A melody that does not make sense. Sometimes a melody that mocks your situation. Still sing it. Joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. Popular scripture. But many of you don't know where it is in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That the joy of the Lord. That means when you lack strength in this kingdom. What you lack is joy. In the physical world, when you lack energy, you are given food. Is that true? In the realm of the spirit, when you lack joy, I mean when you lack strength, what you are given to eat is joy. Sometimes God does not give you the solution. He gives you joy. 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 He said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. The shame, yes sir. The pain, yes sir. The no admission, yes sir. The disappointed meeting that I called people and I said, sick people come. And at the end, nobody was healed. And that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said, next time be a serious man of God before you call us. The Bible said, count it all joy. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. There's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me. And this joy that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time I hear your voice. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million. And you stand and say to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Can you watch your job. And you stand at the gate of your office. It was once yours. But now no longer yours. And say in it oh God I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid. Can you stand before a corpse. And you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life. And you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life. But now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money not lack of a child please listen to me this gloominess we carry around is cheating us are you hearing what i'm saying yes make up your mind to rejoice in the lord why are you rejoicing and crying i'm crying because of the reality of my pain but i rejoice because joy brings harvest you will sow in tears but you will reap in joy not with joy in joy if there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. 
What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him grumble around. Not let him call God names and say I will backslide. Let him pray. Psalm 34 please. From verse 4 to 7. And then the last part. And we will pray. Psalm 34. I sought the Lord. And he heard me. And delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse. We are reading to 4. To 7. They looked unto him. And were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Six. The poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse. The angel of the Lord. Encampeth around them that fear him. And delivereth them. Prayer is a powerful weapon. In all seasons. But especially this season. Lord, what is happening around my life? My wife just got attacked. My son just got attacked. My job just got attacked. I am not understanding what is happening. I set myself like Daniel onto prayer. God grants you grace. You can add with fasting. Add with fasting. This spiritual laziness of eating anyhow, anytime. Many believers now fast as a ceremony. Three days fasting, you carry it on your head as if, you, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting. If you love food more than your destiny, life will cheat you again and again. Food is okay, oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones, you must learn to show food. That your spirit man has grown above it. There are many of you here. You cannot remember. I may be wrong. I'm not saying you should do it. Please. I'm not saying you should do it. But as far as I'm concerned. There are spiritual levels that if you get to. A week should never pass. That you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. 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 To the king who sits on the throne, he marama. To the king, listen. Let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer, is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around, just making noise.
Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. Shakatos kaprandas ke balakata. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. 
pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas kamahasabash. Rakata pakato sopokoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Tasete shanahas kabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Through the king who sits upon the white horse. Shela bakata rekotosia. Imarama. Marama, hey, hey, hey. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Hey, Shena Balara. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. The king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted... Use the same strategy to strengthen. Strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. 
from henceforth even forever next verse for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading till the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity but peace upon joshua selman prayer gives you stability in the next two three minutes you are going to pray and say lord let this prayer stabilize me i shouldn't be shaking over everything i should be able to laugh at certain storms and say jesus is lord lift your voice and pray stability power stamina the lord is my light and my salvation the lord is the strength of my life stability oh god stability oh god the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small your strength is small give me capacity endurance stamina the grace to pass through for the sake of my family the grace to pass through for the sake of my generation the grace to pass through for the sake of my my loved ones Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so will i do unto you there are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said, prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy. Oh, dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. He said, prophesy. There are times you need to prophesy. There are times you need to speak. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Very powerful scripture. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Please give it to us quickly. We are going to pray. The Lord will perfect that which concerned me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare. The Lord is perfecting everything concerning me 
I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are. Put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is my light and salvation. I reject confusion in my life. I hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is how to pray. Is someone ready to pray? Listen to me. There are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning. If you don't prophesy, nothing will happen. Is someone ready to pray? If you don't know what to say, go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them. Lift your voice and begin to speak. There has to be a scripture that you know. It shall keep them in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed towards him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. From them all. From them all. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. It will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord and he shall be glorified behold I do a new thing shall ye not know it I make a way even in the wilderness streams in the desert the Lord shall perfect all that concerns me all the days of my appointed time I wait till my change comes when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion they were like them that dream so said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us he said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I am the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I shall lay up gold as dust. Even the gold of Ophir. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings even to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. Elas kabarandes kalapro oshoda bahazia.
but my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil fresh oil fresh oil blessed in my going out blessed in my coming in blessed is the work of my hands my needing trough in the name of Jesus Christ Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, in the name of Jesus, above only, above only, a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son. No, sir. Open your mouth and cry change my name change my story and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren Jabez the mother called him Jabez named him in sorrow but Jabez was angry he said oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast is someone praying Lord change my financial name change my ministerial name change my marital name 
change my destiny name out of the abundance of your mercy by the encounter I've had with you change my name change my story change my name give me a testimony shut the mouths of the wicked prove once again that you are God and that by yourself please pray God answers prayers give me a new name hallelujah hallelujah next prayer point the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted. Lord, may I never depend on my strength. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men. But my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose until then it was night the war happened in the night the weeping happened in the night but then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel the face of God he says for I have seen God face to face when Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, 
but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my son arise. Son arise. Financial son arise. Ministerial son arise. The encounter is over. The lessons have been learned. The impartations have been received. Therefore, night time be turned today. Night time be turned today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function there are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over nigeria it doesn't matter the grace given to them and the expansion they have attained onto in the spirit covers that sphere elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land there were times when jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person what was the reward of the five, two, and one talent, greater territory, greater influence in the spirit. When kings conquered certain lands, they had increased territory. America is called America today because it's the unity of many states. One American state can be three times Nigeria. One state. Are we together now? Yes. Is why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. And there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other. There is no state that is more than one hour, 10 minutes. Maiduguri to Lagos is the farthest distance. 
one hour 10 minutes exactly you are there but you will fly for hours that is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again you say no problem he has upgraded the grace for I am also a man under authority right from where I am I can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit one of my old secondary school classmates my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army I think at the threshold of the next rank what's the next rank after after major lieutenant colonel yes i think soon that's what they are going to give him he used to be a fearful chicken like young guy i remember when they take us from joss to go to our school he would start crying even before we go out of joss i never cried once to leave home it was a delight and a pleasure to get out that guy was so girlish and feminine i wondered but that guy today is a major sometimes he would stand and do some things you know he could see a roach cockroach and you know how ladies would jump but today he can tell me kneel down hands up you civilian except for the fact that When believers were saved in the early church, they were not just left to go. A few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them. For instance, in Acts chapter 19, the Bible says, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, he came and he found certain disciples, supposedly. And then he asked them a question. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And they said, we've not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And then he said, unto what baptism then were you baptized? And they said, unto the baptism of John. And Jesus corrected them and said, no, the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. So that you will believe on who that will come. And then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul laying his hands upon them. The Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied. They were 12 in number, all of them. That was a new level for them. When you just back down a little, you read from chapter 18, the last six verses. The Bible talks about a man called Apollos, a great man. He was an eloquent man, fervent in spirit, mighty in scripture. The Bible says, but he knew only the baptism of John. And then one day he came for a meeting and then Aquila and Priscilla met him. And then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And then he became more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow i'm back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of God. 
it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us Luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty god so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the lord king james says the acceptable year of the lord i think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day god has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the lord's favor to preach the lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor is one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited there is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and it says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful 
what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be I have absolute disloyalty for error I'm not ashamed when I find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less I know there's more that's found in you and I will never yell will never settle for less One more time. We will never say, we'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. The same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you. It may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time. You see that? by very well-meaning men and women of God from a very sincere heart that's why knowing God is powerful you need flexibility to know God because you will know things about him that will, it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do I come out of this knowing that all my life this is what I believed in I shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of god who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and i remember when he came to see me in my room then as soon as i saw him i saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him and then i was i was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him my brother you may need prayer no 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 no. i don't need anything i'm okay i'm all right i'm fine i'm this i said i understand i'm not about to argue with you but please this is what I'm, no 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 no. this person came for counseling something is obviously wrong with his life and now i'm seeing that this is what is wrong and the gentleman will just not agree and then i pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him and this guy would get up like 15 minutes later shouting and manifesting and talking on under all kinds of things and then when I was done he got up I didn't look down on him I politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his Bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now I believe this I believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? No. Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you i apologize i've seen better now i will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you god has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you 
Is someone learning tonight? I'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight. Trusting God. You came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening. Some of us have come because we are trusting Lord. Can you look down on me with favor? And I'm showing you Jesus himself teaching at the temple. That's why they marveled at him. 20. Let's look at verse 20. 20 of Luke chapter 4. We're praying shortly. Luke. I'm 20 now. I'm 20. Let's look at verse 20. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister. So there was a man of God there before him. And sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. 21. Let me add 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. When you read down, the Bible says they marveled at him. Saying, what, what doctrine is this? Is this not Joseph's son? Where did he learn this one from now? You must know something new to rise to a new level. What you know has brought you where you are. And if you stay there, you will continue to recycle your results. You must contend for light and glory and truth. That's why I sang that song. And I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in me. I told you for many years, demons used to oppress me. Remember my story as a man of God. I went to many people sincerely. Let me tell you this. By God's grace, I tell you this. I'm a student of knowledge. There are few people that study and read like me. I say it with all humility. And so I read lots of books that propose so many things. And I walked in those things. Yet these spirits would not leave me. As a man of God, they would oppress me. I would go to bed and they would oppress me. Sometimes even in the midst of fasting, like it's happening to many of you. I will round up the fast. As I'm rounding up the fast, the same experience will happen again. I said, what? I mean, what is this? Is it, will it be honest that I don't have faith? Eventually, I found out what was wrong. And God helped me in that area. That's why I continue to trust God to help people in these areas. May God, may God grant you the grace to prove what you know. Amen. Not just to say what you know. This is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future. May God grant you the grace to prove what you know. Amen. Because the end of all argument truly is results. Consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained. Are we together? And tonight the Lord wants to visit us. Like Benga shared, it's a buffet. A buffet of fat things. He has set the table before us. For yours, it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting God for, but there is a level of favor. Listen, God has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Genesis 17 and verse 6. And I will make you exceeding fruitful, he says. And nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins. One of the keys I taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of God this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the when the jealousy of God zooms on you you become a fearful wonder even to yourself it's true it's true you stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say, God, what are you doing? It's not unmerited. It is empowered, but not unmerited. There is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it. And tonight I believe that in the name of Jesus Christ, within the few minutes, we have a very quick work to do tonight. There are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life. And it does not matter. Trust God that they will leave you. 
there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you i will come to you i will come to you you get up in the morning lord thank you and there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits and I'm not just talking finance. Finance is not the only expression of favor. It's a needed one, but not the only expression of favor. When God lifts men to make your life easy, you are trusting God for a new dimension in the spirit. Someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen. That's favor. It doesn't always have to be money. When we say favor, people think money. You are trusting God for a realm of the prophetic. And then God grants you access to a man of God you never would have had access to. And one impartation brings you into that realm. It is favor. The absence of hardship is the proof of favor. Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me. Listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. That you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate god's word upon your life a dear man of god i met you know while i was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday i met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir i've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months i'm a man of god and i've been praying and i laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power yeah. it's true within your power to speak and change things within your power and i told him i said let's pray i said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle i almost cannot believe this even as a man of god that i was sitting down and this is the name this is that and i told him congratulations and he said what is this and i told him that this is called the power of god the power of god is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters i i i never i never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in, in a moment and you're waiting for days in Zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if you're a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things 
and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray blessed be the name of the lord results are not acts of pride and arrogance they are acts of the grace and the mercy of god activated through knowledge so god takes you to a new dimension we are going to do a very we will trust god for a very quick walk i took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle the performance all of that is it, just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach 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 but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me i've taught you how the word of god works that the word of god is like a tray is carrying something you don't receive it just for the word's sake you receive it for what is on it if if i'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice you bring it on a tray is that true the first thing i receive is the tray i receive the tray with joy not because i need the tray i need the rice the word of god is a conveyor of the possibilities of god so when the word of god comes to you you are happy because of what is in it and on it he sent forth his word he sent forth his word his word of deliverance his word of of healing his word of lifting have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born he says but as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son that means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees and say lord you just answered my prayer of five years in one day how shall these things be that's the voice of unbelief we're talking god here we're not talking a man god No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the path of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rob their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life
I receive the whole counsel of God. I receive the whole counsel. If there is wealth, I receive it. If there is wisdom, I receive it. If there is grace, I receive it. Everything that is on this table, sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything. Little of what? Everything. And we will never see. Now you join me. We know there's more that's found in you. Sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for us. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for us. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it don't trust in god for a change of results god thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify the supply of the Spirit upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words? How forcible are right words? There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time... The Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important. And then number four, we'll have the time to pray on our requests. And then I prophesy and speak over everyone. And that will be it for the night. The, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that. I say this to you, especially for those of you who are coming for the first time, so that your heart can be open. It's going to be a flow all through. And I want you to participate with your heart. Let your heart be open. By the way, you can stand in for your loved ones. And then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world, there's no distance truly in the spirit. You can receive, you can believe, and then God can make this true in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a grace that I found myself releasing upon the body of Christ in this season. And that's what we're going to start with. The Lord, I don't know, God has been doing something in my life since January this year started. Is the grace for speed. 
this is what I want to release upon our lives all through my meetings in Lagos for every meeting the Lord has instructed me to release that grace listen no matter how many times you've heard me pray it I like for your heart to be open there is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like Elijah are we together now I want to I, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside i release speed people are receiving that grace strange speed speed in ministry Speed in your career. Receive it. God is releasing it upon you. No more delays. No more delays. By the Spirit of the Living God. No more delays online, offline, localized here. I stretch my hands and I prophesy that grace. Right now, people will begin to run by the Spirit. I'm seeing it in the Spirit. An energizing of the Spirit is coming on men and women. Shakato seketelekata. Speed, speed. I prophesy speed, speed, speed. Outside overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. By the roadside, speed for you and for your family members. By this grace, I crush delay. I crush delay. I crush delay. I cross delay, I cross stagnation, remaining in one position. I judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace. But now over families, not just individuals, you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may god use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt I release you, I release you, I release you. Habakato shalikata. Enteleketos kaparakato shekete. Embrekete kete kete kete. Speed. In the name of Jesus, I cause every power. I cause every force. By this grace and by this unction, I release speed. The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name 
name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. My God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke of barrenness. I stretch my hand, whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now that if there is anyone within this road among those standing that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction. That's why I'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me. You will be surprised to see what happens. I will not ordinarily do that. No, we, we represent, we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing. But we are in a season of fruitfulness and God is giving me an instruction. So I'm just going to do exactly what God is asking me to do. Just to be able to hold something and release that grace. And that you have the grace to receive you surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I place a grace upon your life. You may look weak, but in the name of Jesus, let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies. Don't say you don't need it. 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 In the name of Jesus, let it give you rest to serve the Lord. Let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of Jesus. And it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people entering realms right now in the spirit entering financial dimensions it is first spiritual before physical listen to me it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness let your faith come alive there are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities it's in you Don't come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure please please i'm praying from my heart if you don't know what you are doing please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever are we together let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters when god begins to speak over your life in an area is because he has seen what is going to befall men and like an ark he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety many people in this year will languish financially i'm telling you this listen there will be a lot of cries that's why god is releasing this grace there will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money I'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so i'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience god we're not playing games with anyone's destiny but i'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm it's a it's a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found me it's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found me. And we will never say, we'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a woman outside. The Lord is showing me a woman outside. The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing a very strong anointing will come upon that woman and the lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation is is a dimension of grace i want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of jesus christ 
I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. But I stretch my hands. I'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people. I release that grace right now. Help them, please. I release that grace right now. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our Lord. Eternity's Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our Lord. Eternity's Something is coming on you. But I can't Some more come, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to go. But I can't deny my body. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Listen. Alamosha zebra has kada balakada. Le karuzi ada. Le kros kadi bra hasada shiada. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now, I release that grace, the healing anointing. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace, the healing anointing. Receive it from ministry, receive it from ministry. The healing anointing outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace, the healing grace, the healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read you these spirits there are forces that stand the destinies of people listen please especially if this is your first time coming ah. 
I'm seeing fire. Fire from ground up. Fire from ground. That's from your feet. Rising up. I'm going to count three. Listen. For those people, please, I want them out here. There is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory. Are you ready now? Please, I want you to believe it. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. It's not a ritual. And let me have all the people here, ushers. Thank you, Father. Every devil of darkness that followed anyone here, any family, any situation here, in the name of Jesus, it's time for them to come out of their hiding place. I decree and I prophesy that at the count of three as you shout Jesus, may the fire of God bring a separation between you and those influences. One, get ready. Two, three, shout Jesus. Come out of them now. I cast every devil in the name of Jesus. Shake a sobakata and they shall cast out devils. I command the spirit influences behind situations, behind circumstances. I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. Spirits of ancestry, territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position, that refuse to let them rise. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a sword. And I know that sword is the word of God. I cause by that sword. Let there be a separation. That every force. Tying anyone's destiny. You're going to shout Jesus again. At the count of three. Be ye lifted all ye ancient gods. One, two, three. Go back up, shake it, 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 shake it. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Release their destinies. Covenant keeping God Yahweh Covenant keeping God You are the covenant keeping God Yahweh Yahweh the covenant keeping God Hallelujah hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit many of you will feel physical fire on your hands there will be a strange deliverance that's why anything you do does not work no matter if it's a business it will fail if it's a relationship it will fail anything you lay your hands there is a spirit that steals your joy but right now I challenge and I attack that spirit let the fire of God right now at the count of three separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. The yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck. I break it now. The yoke of bad luck. Receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. Makato se sekete lekete yakata. Shabranda katos, sadakatos, keleva karatos, eketos kepekete kepekete. Karusa siyama kandos, shalamakata. I break you free 
from the yoke of Babylon in the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here, I arrest this spirit and at the count of three, every devil you will put your load and every trouble you have brought to this destiny and go. I speak as one sent by the anointing. At the count of three, leave one, two, three, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so going to pray for the sick. Who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name, Janet, Janet, there's, there's no time we have, Janet, please don't enjoy anybody, are you Janet? Stand up, I had the name Janet, please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself here, if you are not Janet, go back, Janet. Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Huh? Where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now in the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands lift your hands just do what I'm asking you to do in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I'm seeing like oil come upon you and God is saying he's shifting you to a new level of favor in the name of Jesus I decree and I prophesy by the spirit over you 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 All of you standing here, for time's sake, I'm going to pray for you. One of you, um, the power of God is going to come on one of you. The moment that happens, I'll pray for everybody. I'm seeing one person, one of you. The Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person. Not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you, God is opening doors of opportunity. Lord, where is that one person? I decree and declare. When that one person is identified, and then I just pray for all of you in general. I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are, and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter. And just around that vicinity of the media, I stretch my hands. May the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, like a mighty rushing wind, rest upon the individuals within that vicinity. In the name of Jesus, that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy. I'm back to you people in front. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare. 
whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from Asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. This will be the beginning of your days of glory. Step into it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. We raise your banner. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are in the name of jesus may the fire of the holy spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online let there be complete emancipation for such people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my dear this lady wearing pink lift your hands Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, our time is gone we are going to be very very fast are we together um if you are trusting god listen carefully whether you are in overflow one overflow two overflow three if what you have please listen if what you have is a terminal disease a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence are we together like a death sentence you know what i mean i don't have to mention names Please, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, be fair, be honest. I will want to minister by myself to you. Now, number two, those in here, you can come out and you are trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones. Overflow one, please to your projector stand. Overflow two, same thing to your projector stand. Overflow three, to your projector stand. So if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i'd like you to just come believing hallelujah 
praise the lord in the name of jesus i decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the holy spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh, and then if, if, if there's a need for that, maybe the protocol department can help. Let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately. We'll be very fast, please, um, dear people of God. Let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um, finish up on time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you standing here, I want you to believe there is a God in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch doesn't matter what the situation is release your faith in jesus name god bless you um i will just just stand on them because of time please if you are yet to submit your prayer request it's not a ritual you can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly please if you're under the anointing you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you please quickly quickly Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libra Skadabrando Shari Katosia Brada. The same way we are standing on these requests. In the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation, in the name of Jesus Christ. Rado zakando shalakos kada brehe seneko shalabras. Ebro kabo shalakos kebro de kerosa tibra kato shalabras. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. This is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us, a representation of your pain your stress that which attempts to challenge God over your life no matter how many times we prophesy we are limited and this is an opportunity to have everyone it's like tabling your heart before God there is a God that answers prayers this is not a ritual that's why we bring it before him and let me tell you we have we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this and I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness that this that you have dropped here before the lord in the name of jesus as you have brought it before him it will never if it's a tragic situation it will never return to you again and if it is a request that must appear in your life then i decree and declare i don't know how it will happen like the prophet said you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water i prophesy i decree and declare in the name that is above all names by the god of all grace your answer will find its way to your life even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you may my god make it happen for you in the name of jesus christ and i prophesy to you that these egyptians you see today that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ for many of you even before this month is over in the name of jesus you will take your list one by one one by one one by one one by one in the name of jesus we decree it so by the power of the holy spirit we decree it so by the blood of the Lamb, we decree it so 
by the word of God we establish it it is done in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you now this will be um, the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do I round up the services with a prophetic word because I believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of God comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word people's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again let me tell you do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too I listen to the messages and God is my witness I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely are we together now so believe this and you will see it work in your life it is only what you believe that will work are we together favor like never before in the name of Jesus beginning from this night may he follow you like a shadow follows a man I say it again favor like never before from tonight may he follow you in the name of Jesus Christ strange favor strange favor activating possibilities in your life strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ number two I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every overdue issue in your life an issue that has stayed long beyond necessary in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life May my God, the God of all grace, establish and settle you in every area. In the name of Jesus Christ, every long-standing issue comes to an end now. Everything that misrepresents you before your helpers, the spirit that creates a bad image, in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now I pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not Sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gainsay nor resist I decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom see this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of God will be evident on your life I stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are in ministry, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. For every leader here, let there be a baptism of that anointing now. Everyone due for promotion, your place of work, or your standing in for your, your loved ones, I decree and declare, we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year. You will die during election. You will die during this and that. A crisis will happen and you will be a victim of this. I silence the voice of that spirit now.
I decree and declare whether by road whether by air whether through the operation of the wickedness in men remain ever exempted from death in the name of Jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of Jesus Christ I decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it Some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of Jesus Christ God has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances please I will continue to see this they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially and I pray for you those of us who have little groups ministries fellowships that were helping and building other believers and for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level nothing new nothing fresh I decree after this miracle service step into a new order of spiritual operation whatever needs to be restored in your life before February restoration restoration to bring back I command it to your life now in the name of Jesus We are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of Jesus any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of God may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment Whatever it is that you have asked the Lord that I have not mentioned here, but is a desperate desire in your heart, I release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me. In the name of Jesus, let it be turned to your testimony. Two more prayer points. May the spiritual fire on your altar, the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of Jesus we fan your coals back to flames
whatever has shot your appetite for knowledge you used to be a student of knowledge you buy books you are online learning and growing but for some reason whether carelessness complacency or just an attack now there is no appetite to know and to grow i declare that after this night may the grace that causes men to seek god and seek after truth may that grace be released upon you let me add one more prayer no matter where your loved ones are on this earth whether in this country or outside of this country within this continent or outside of this continent whether in health or not whether following this service or not we decree and declare may the hand the help and the favor of god locate them and even as you are receiving and celebrating testimonies may your loved ones have the same experience in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus blessed be the name of the lord wave your hands and give jesus praise father we glorify you we bless you thank you thank you thank you i'm walking in the reality of every prophetic word thank you i receive every grace i receive every word in the name of jesus except if you're under the anointing i like us to honor in one minute we will always do this we're a ministry that believes in soul winning we believe in giving people an opportunity to meet jesus and um, even though our time is gone necessity is laid upon us to give someone an opportunity to find god's saving grace tonight let's minimize distraction please and so for all those here sitting overflow one overflow two overflow three uh, the roadside those connecting online and those in the main auditorium you are here tonight and the holy spirit is ministering to you that you need to make this year different you need to give god an opportunity to start afresh with you could be that you have given your heart to the lord but you need that assurance you truly need to rededicate your life to say lord i'm handing over everything we have just a minute or two for you if you are sitting in overflow one two and the roadside and in here i would request you to come just stand in front here and then those at overflow three for the sake of time and distance i would request that you just walk to your projector stand and then those following online you can just follow me as i lead you through this prayer two minutes the lord is speaking to you please summon the courage arise let's encourage them make your way to the front god bless you those coming from outside please hurry up clear the way for them please god bless you god bless you there's nothing compulsory in the kingdom but the benefits are worth the while make your way quickly someone outside is saying apostle i want to come but i'm a bit ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of make your way run to jesus if you're coming please come quickly there are contemplations happening in your spirit while you are sitting down you know you need to be here the devil will not ask you to be here the fact that there is a prompting to be here is a sign that the holy spirit is ministering to you win that war get up from your seat and come apostle what if my colleagues see me it's good they see you so that they become witnesses of your transformation make your way quickly we have just one more minute for you for those of you clapping in the name of jesus this is how many will honor you because you are committing yourself to encourage those who are coming to jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i understand that in the day and age that we live in it takes a lot of courage to be very vocal on a decision like this we live in a time where people pride themselves in being sarcastic they pride themselves in laughing at others especially when you are doing something spiritual 
Jesus said whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away I honor and I truly celebrate all of you for the courage to stand even in the presence of everyone may I request that you just lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and repeat this truthfully after me say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe in you that you are the Son of God tonight I hand over my heart my mind my body my life to your Lordship I declare that you are Lord of my life I declare that I exchange my life for your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin of Satan of the flesh is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you for these precious ones they have made a decision for many of them the first time for many of them securing their eternal destinies I decree and I declare that the grace that helps people to stand to thrive and to excel in this kingdom may that grace come upon you I open you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified I plant in you tonight a fresh hunger and passion for the things of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare I dissociate you from anything that can impede your spiritual growth may you enjoy the help of God in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you dear brothers and sisters let me request that you follow there's a lady waving her hands please all of you follow her in concert she would lead you to a committee that will welcome you more formally on our behalf is this the best you can do koinonia blessed be the name of the Lord hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain